All right, thank you all. So we learned so much from the past few panels, but one theme that is clear is the need for measurement. And we know that all of you are really excited to dive into this topic as well, based on the earlier poll that we had up on the screen. So I am thrilled to be able to have a few moments to dive into measurement and how we understand customer insights. I also love that we were already able to dispel this myth that somehow CTV is only useful for brand building, because we recognize that it really is able to be applied to the full fund and I'm also really impressed because I see CTV as one of the most valuable channels for marketers. It has increasingly high levels of authentication and the amount of data that can be applied to it, especially compared to some of the legacy mediums like linear, is just crazy. So there are no better people to help us dive into this than two of our experts. So I'm joined on stage by Eddie Parker, who is the Executive Vice President of Business Intelligence at Starcom and who supports the McDonald's relationship, and Katie Hanafy, who is the head of Media Strategy and Investment for PepsiCo North America. So thank you both so much for being here with us today. Thank you for having me. Thank you. <laughs> all right, so Katie, let's start with you. You know, we talked in some of the earlier panels about all of the different measurement offerings that are available in market. With so many different solutions available, how do you approach capturing different consumer insights or understanding the consumer landscape to measure the activity across the huge portfolio of brands that you support? Yeah, I mean, uh, first of all, thank you for having me. Uh, I'm super excited to be here. And I feel like that is a loaded question in so many ways because I think it isn't easy to measure, right? And especially the impact on the business uh, when you're a packaged good company. Um, and I think, you know, we have a robust offering at PepsiCo of consumer insight team that we are always, always maniacally focused on the consumer. So everything starts with the consumer. How are they shopping? What are their health trends? Trends, how are they consuming content? How are they, you know, out and about? Just everything we need to know about them, right? And then we also have a tremendous amount of data from our customers, retail media. We subscribe to a lot of first, uh, second party, third party data. Everything is built upon that, right? So then the question is, how do you measure that? Um, so there are, uh, as you know, a number of measurement solutions. I think the biggest one that we still go back to, whether we like it or not, is you know ROI, right? And that is a mixed model offering. Uh, we've built a proprietary tool internally that we still hold as our you know source of truth on driving business outcomes. Right? We certainly use other studies uh, as brand health, you know, uh, incremental sales, and other media metrics to make sure we can drive the business. But at the end of the day, you know, the question that I'm going to get is what's the return? on investment, so we have to be able to do that. So for us, having that mixed model is still very important measurement strategy that we're going to lean on for, for all of our, our um, mediums, especially CTV. Got it. That makes sense. And I'm curious, Eddie, you know, Katie mentioned a few different uh, KPIs that one could anchor on when you think about success of different campaigns. As you're advising McDonald's, how do you think about the different KPIs that they're striving to reach, especially as it relates to CTV? And how has that potentially evolved over time? Yeah, so our McDonald's clients and on the McDonald's business, we're interested in measuring real business KPIs, are we driving people into the store, and how much are they spending when they get there. And so we've been pressed by our client to develop measurement solutions that uh, look at real behavioral metrics that do track to real business objectives. So we don't put a lot of stock in media reach and frequency. We think that's important, um, but it serves you know, the overall purpose of driving business. And we definitely don't use a lot of survey-based metrics where we're you know, asking people how they feel or what they plan to do. Um, the nice thing about McDonald's as a client is they're a relatively data-rich client from a first-party data perspective. So all of that data comes through their app. About 20% of their business is what they would consider digital business, meaning it's ordered through the app. And for digital customers and digital transactions, we collect all sorts of data on how, people are, how often people are coming in and how much they're spending and what they're buying and what combinations. Um, so we're building a measurement solution with AWS as a clean room and Sapien as our technology partner, actually with Trade Desk as our initial uh, proof of concept media partner, where we 
bring data together in the AWS clean room, McDonald's first party data with log file data from the trade desk. And actually, the, the thing about the McDonald's first party data is, while it's incredibly rich for the 20% of the business that is digital, and there's another about 40% of the business where people purchase through credit cards, but McDonald's 40% of their business are cash transactions, which means we have very little visibility from a data perspective. So we actually use location data as our primary KPI, tracking people visiting McDonald's. And so we put all of that data together into the clean room. We match on a person's level. We uh, have a really pretty complex set of control versus exposed um, tests where we're tracking which tactics, so partners, but especially audiences and creatives, are driving conversion, with the primary KPI being in-store visits measured by the location data. Secondary KPI being digital transactions, but along with that comes all of the rich detail that I talked about in terms of what people are buying, um, in what combinations we get into customer lifetime value through their first party data, um, and using that to measure tactics relatively quickly. So we're cutting off the measurement date on a Sunday, getting results by like Wednesday or Thursday, and optimizing mid-campaign to the audiences and the creatives that are performing best. That's amazing. And I love how casually you're just like, oh, we've got total directly observed coverage on 60% of their business. And then for the other 40, we can use other third party assets to help complement it. I mean, that's amazing coverage, especially to then be able to plug it into that quick turnaround time. That's really impressive to see. Yeah. Um, and Katie, you know, I know that we've talked about how KPIs are only as valuable as uh, the measurement solution into which they're plugged or how accurate they are. How are you all thinking about the KPIs that matter for your team? And I don't know if that's different by brand or product, um, but I know you guys have also invested a lot in internal assets. You know, Eddie talked about how they're building um, on top of AWS with Sapien. You guys have something called ROI Engine. Would mm -hmm. you mind walking us through how you built that, how it's used, and how that's um, applied to the different brands in your portfolio? Sure, absolutely. So first, let me just say, I'm, I'm a little jealous of your first party data. Um, <laughs> But uh, we are doing a fantastic job at PepsiCo for sure. So I would say, so we started this journey probably about four or five years ago on making sure that we're ready and, da and uh, data enabled for all of our marketing decisions, especially when it comes to media. Um, so, you know, we don't own that last transaction. Uh, our customers do, but uh, like a lot of the conversation, we talked about retail media and the wealth of data that our customers have that we certainly want to make sure we can tap into. But uh, first it starts with organizing our data, right? So we do get some data from sweepstakes and promotions and, uh, and that varies by brands. Uh, for example, Mountain Dew has a very loyal fan base, uh, as does Gatorade, so they also have a D2C business. So we do have some pockets of first party data, but for the vast majority, we don't. So we take all that, we, um, we have a, um, a partnership with um, you know, Salesforce where we have our own data that's pulled into it. Uh, we take uh, subscription data from you know, Nielsen, IRI, Experian to understand consumer behavior, propensity to buy. We also have a partnership with Fetch, which uh, also uploads all the, the receipts so we know uh, what people are buying, what consumers are buying. And we take all that and we call it cDNA data, right? That data is what we transact on, and then that data is also what feeds our ROI engine, right? So we have seen uh, results when we've built the ROI engine and we use data that we've increased our media effectiveness, we've increased ROI, uh, being able to measure that, you know, internally through, um, through the ROI engine. And I will say, like, it isn't as fast as real time, like as, as we like. It's still a mixed modeling result, um, you know, mechanism. However, we are able to do, you know, real time optimizations through uh, some, you know, automated dashboards, uh, viewability, consumer engagement, uh, click through rates, and uh, you know, attention. Right. We also know those are driving uh, driving up effectiveness, which then in turn. In, improves ROI, right? So the more effective you are, the better your return on investment is. So um, I would say that's been the journey to date. I will say we are looking at expanding that, running secondary and treasury models where we can start to really understand and unpack what partners are doing, right? So uh, all of the ROI engine has feeds for all of our digital partners. Uh, we have creative feeds, we have placement feeds. It's, it's only as good as the data we can get. So the more robust data that we get from our partners, the better reads we can get. 
Um, and I think CTV specifically, bringing it back to that, like used to be lumped in with linear TV, right? Everything was lumped in together and we didn't really understand how it was performing. Now with digital uh, uh, capabilities and technology capabilities, we can get individual feeds. Yep. So we are now getting smarter and making those smarter decisions on how to activate uh, in that space. But again, it all comes back to ROI and then uh, you know, driving brand health. Uh, yep. We need to have to have uh, good equity for our brands as well. Yeah, that makes sense. And you know, you touched on it briefly, the role that media mix modeling is still having. Frequently, we talk a lot about the sexy new product offerings or whatever's emerging, but the reality is that MMM is still playing a pretty critical role as advertisers are thinking about how to allocate budgets. You know, Eddie, I'm curious, when you work with McDonald's, do you see them innovating against this at all? Or how are they updating their MMM approach to account for CTV to make sure that it's actionable and that they can then plan against it effectively? Yeah, MMM is really important for McDonald's. They call it Romy, which is return on marketing investment. And everything that I talked about earlier with the clean room measurement solution is about driving in-market optimization, but overall as a source of truth for performance of channels and partners, they rely on MMM. And that's in part because McDonald's is a really franchise business. They have owners and operators, and it's their money that we're spending. So we need to be able to show them what they're getting back. It's still a little theoretical for them sometimes compared to the, the uh, cost hitting their bottom line. But yep. um, it at least speaks in terms that they're understanding about why they're spending money on marketing. Um, and it's funny because a lot of previous clients that I'd worked on, their models, for whatever reason, love linear TV. Something about the cheap tonnage of the you know, impressions that you can buy. Um, had a really strong ROI, and a lot of brand managers are compensated, in some cases, even based on ROI. So we're trying to make recommendations based on what we're seeing from a consumer perspective um, that are going against what their model are telling them. And we're, we're telling them to shift dollars out of linear TV into digital. On McDonald's, that's less of a problem, because for whatever reason having to do with their audience or the way they're using channels, CTV streaming and social video too have always outperformed linear TV. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit of an easier transition and for several years they've been shifting dollars to the point where um, something like only 11% of our total national media spend right now is in linear TV. Um, I think one of the keys is something that you touched on a second ago is for streaming, CTV, our primary KPI within the MMM model is not ROI, it's effectiveness. Mm. And ROI because you know, cost is the bottom line, uh, it tends to drive you towards cheaper, less impactful, more efficient units, but sometimes at the expense of quality um, and sometimes driving you to, towards a, a short-term impact that doesn't really last. Mm -hmm. And effective channels and executions um, tend to be the ones that are more involving and more engaging and we found also have more brand building power and more mm -hmm. long-term impact. Um, so CTV, because it can be an involving and engaging platform, um, tends to perform well in terms of effectiveness. It's actually our top channel in terms of effectiveness and setting that as the KPI has really allowed us to unlock what it's doing for the McDonald's business. Amazing, top channel in terms of effectiveness. That's just yes. incredible to hear. And I think speaking to the point Tim made earlier around how brands are shifting, it sounds like you guys are really just at the tip of the spear in that, which is amazing. I will say, you know, when I think about my experience as a consumer with McDonald's, it's pretty straightforward. I eat there a lot, frequently in the airport with our kids, or we swing by the drive through for the Happy Meals. With Pepsi brands, it's mm -hmm. definitely more varied, right? You know, and mm -hmm. you referenced it a bit earlier. I think about going to the grocery store and buying a case of Gatorade for the kids. I think about ordering a Diet Pepsi last night at dinner. There's definitely also been a more noticeable push. So interacting with Mountain Dew on social media mm -hmm. or recently Rockstar had their digital rewards program where you actually gave a consumer a 1970s Mustang, which I was very impressed by. Uh, so as you're pulling in data from all of these different facets, how do you then marry it together to get a clear understanding of who your consumers are and what their journey looks like in an action way. Yeah, so um, again, so it goes back to organizing your data, and we have a great uh, data team, and we do every probably six months rebuild our, our targets mm -hmm. based on data for each brand. Um, and that is rooted in what cons the consumers are doing and how they're behaving. So for that Rockstar example, we knew that that would be a passion point and it would make sense for them to run that type of sweepstakes. Um, so that, that's how we kind of, you know, it's, it's a very individual brand bottoms up versus 
Um, some companies look at it a portfolio. So we are uh, we are building brands based on consumer insights, mm -hmm. and then we measure those based on the performance of each brand. Now, ideally, we do need to drive the full portfolio across the business, and it is based on you know ROI. But you know it's a balancing act, right? Because some brands are, are bigger and have more scale. Some are um, you know new brands and have some more uh, jobs to be done with uh, you know awareness, driving engagement. Engagement. So we, we try to balance it to, to rise all tides, if you will, yep. to make sure that we're driving the business in totality. But every brand does have a different role within the portfolio. Um, and we make sure we have clear swim lanes that we can measure against that um, on how they're performing. And do you find that they share best practices with each other to kind of learn from, oh, that worked really well over here and I've got a similar customer base? Or how do you share those findings? Yeah, we're actually really good at collaborating and sharing, um, especially on the be beverage side of the business. We certainly want to make sure that we share everything. We have uh, re business reviews with all of our partners. We do a lot of internal sharing. I would say we're also getting really good uh, with sharing with our Frito-Lay friends on the snack side. Uh, that's a different you know, uh, piece of business. They are different uh, leaders in the market than we are, but there's a lot of best practices that we can share. And then to even level it up even more, we are now sharing across the globe, right? So we are now more connected on the media front, making more global media deals mm -hmm. than we ever have. Um, and we are sharing all of those learnings and measurements to have uh, one holistic view as one enterprise that we can all learn from. That's amazing. That's so cool to hear. Yeah. Um, and I'm curious, I guess I'll, I'll ask both of you this, but you know, there's so many different representatives here from different advertisers and agencies who may not be as far along in the life cycle that both of your respective companies are. So for someone who's starting out and trying to figure out how do I prove that CTV can add value or how do I think about measuring in a business way that's actionable, what advice would you have for them? Yeah, I think it's that. I think um, it's making sure that you're set up to make decisions based on the results that you're seeing in your measurements. So in addition to working at McDonald's, I have an agency-wide role at Starcom where we're launching a new practice called business intelligence, which is about taking measurement and analytics results, but bringing them back around to the front end of the planning process and using the outputs to drive planning decisions. Um, but it can be as simple as just a little bit of prep work to be purposeful about what you're looking to learn and what you're going to do. So before every MMM uh, results presentation, which come quarterly, we send, a, we call it a precap, but we a list of results that we have our eye on, what we're looking for, and what we're going to do if we see certain things in the results. We have structured test and learns where we're clear on what we're going to do if we see things perform a certain way. Um, or even the optimization tool that I was talking about earlier, the clean room measurement solution, setting that up so that we're getting results in time to inform decisions within channels where we actually can optimize. Um, it's a push from our clients, but it's a really good push because your measurement is only as good as the decisions that you're able to inform as a result of it. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, and I think, I mean, you're, you're spot on on that. I think the way we, we look at it is we have to balance short, short term and long term, mm -hmm. right? And it, it's, it's not an easy thing to do when your organization is focused on, you know, reporting out numbers on a quarterly basis, but then you have to build brands. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, having, you know, effective mediums that drive consumer engagement and gain attention are, have to be part of your media mix. The question is, how much are you willing to invest in it if you are getting a lower ROI because it's maybe not as cost efficient as some other mediums, but knowing that that is the longer term play to build brands and that is going to pay off in the end. So it's definitely a balancing act and I think it's something that we struggle with all the time on as you're building brands, but then also want to drive sales. Mm -hmm. um, and you can do it. And sometimes you might over-invest, and sometimes you might swing back, and then you'll eventually find the right you know, middle point yep. to be able to unlock you know, the, the right spot by brand in order to be both effective and efficient to drive short-term sales and build brands. Yeah, I think that's such a great point. You know, sometimes we get stuck on the last touch or the last click, and we forget that it's a journey, and it's an interaction with the consumer along so many different touch points that all all contributed to that final outcome. So that's great. So, all right, last question. I, you know, ironically, I feel like for the last two or three years, many panels have started with, okay, this is the year of CTV measurement. And so I'm curious, as you all look ahead to 2024, what are you most excited about or what do you think will happen in the space of CTV measurement? Um, you know, Just a small question. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah um, 
you know, I'm excited for, on a personal level, I'm excited for what we're able to do with our first party data and the solutions that we're able to build and, and just kind of what's happened with identity and clean room measurement and the ability to bring these sort of data sets together. I think the challenge that comes along with that is regulatory because I think, um, you know, new rulings or new challenges to different data sets, actually location data, which I just described as uh, being central to what we're building, is starting to be challenged by the FTC and certain partners are having questions. And so um, I, I think there's a lot of excitement out there, um, but I also think of this question with sort of a little apprehension about just making sure that the foundations we're building are sound and that we are able to sort of forecast what the market is going to bring so that we can account for it. Yeah, makes sense. I think we're most excited about being able to, uh, you know, I think John talked about it and, and, and Jamie talked about like bringing upper uh, upper funnel to lower funnel, right? Like, and I think CTV is a huge, there's huge upside because it's all digitally connected. It can be tech enabled. We can use DSPs like the trade desk to make sure that we can uh, serve uh, higher um, engaging brand messages and then follow up with a shopper message for various customers if we want. And we can be very effective in doing that and, and, and bringing those two, if you will, targets together because historically brands have, you know, very aspirational, uh, inspirational targets of the future, but then our shopper teams want to drive purchase now. So this this uh, environment and technology will be able to to bridge that for us, and I think that's uh, that's going to be the new way we're going to think about driving full performance media across the board. Yep, I love that. Yeah, it's interesting. Both of yours seem predicated on improved tech that can let us do what we wanted to, and having the right data assets in a privacy-centric way that allows us to achieve those results. So, it should be an exciting year. Absolutely. Thank you both so much for the time. We really appreciate it. Thank you for having us. Yeah. Yeah.